if she is asleep. Very weird angle. I did just start, by the way. She's oh. <laughs> got a foot up on the door. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Anyone seeing this live? Just, just, just getting started. Bear with me. I hope I have all my supplies here. There's a thing in here where I can actually see the chat and who's online and whatnot. But it's not showing up. You would think I would know where that's at. Chat. There it is. Found it. Hello, Steven and Dan. So I'm curious, did face did Facebook, did YouTube notify you guys before I actually started the stream? Or did you happen to just, you know, be online? It was like, hey, he started, because I only started like a minute ago. As you can tell, because like I'm just now actually getting going. But um, I got a whole stack of batteries back here today. So I figured I would retry the video that I was doing when I did a live stream like two live streams ago where I was building a battery. Um, but I didn't have good video or mic and so it was like kind of a pointless video and I'm surprised so many people stayed as long as they did because I went back and watched it and that was really bad. So here we are, got a YouTube notification, that's cool. By the way, um, I did do a mic check and video check before I started but I'd be curious to know how it sounds. Um, I actually have a real mic today, but it's not like on me. So if you notice that it's like, you know, you can't hear me if I'm not looking at you, let me know. I'm curious. Those are just the cells, but I do have uh, the cases as well. At least a couple of them left. Oh, this has got some junk in it. Because you know, got to start from scratch, right? Sounds and looks great. That's always encouraging. Thank you. That means a longer bit. Anyway, as usual, I'm going to be in here um, building a battery. But if you had any questions while I do... I'm happy to monologue. I'm happy to monologue about my opinion. Or if you have some questions about something specific that I might be able to answer, I'll go for it. Um, so I'm gonna pull these face plates when I or these BMS plates. Um, when I first ordered these, they came in wrong. They wouldn't fit the BMS, the breaker would hit the BMS, so I gotta make sure that's the right one. I probably need to swap it out for the right one. <laughs> Let me just get this all taken apart first. Dan, did you manage to sell your Outback stuff yet? Okay, and then this guy. Where is... A stack of plates around here someplace. Okay, let me just pull this. I can just work on it. Ooh, that was probably loud, sorry. Alright, here is BMS. Let's 
the right one. That's the right one. And I'm quite sure this is the wrong plate. So I'm gonna put this over here in the wrong, the wrong plate pile and look around for the right one. It's this one. That one appears to be a correct plate, but it's shifted off to the right some more. So, what would be cool is if I had a little manual screwdriver in here. Oh, look, I do. One of my fancy fluke screwdrivers. I could do this with the electric, but you know. <laughs> yeah, my room's stacked pretty high right now with stuff. I was uh, pretty happy to get these, though. It's only been a month and a half since I ordered them. So, of course, I'm getting everything, like, um, out of sync. So, last time when I was doing this, I ran out of cells, but I still had, like, three or four cases left. Now I've got 100 and... I think I ordered 128 cells but I only have three cases and my cases probably aren't going to be here for another month because they just got shipped out. But of course they've got a longer lead time because they actually have to build the cases and then ship them out. And then it's going to take a month, month and a half to get here. So I'll only be able to build like three batteries and then the cells are just going to sit over there blocking the window um, <laughs> until I get more cases in. But that's how that works. All right, so there's my screen that I can go back and build my front face with. Those screws I will use when I put the screen on. I need to find my cable here and plug it in before I pop this guy into place. Where is that cable? These guys, is that right? That looks right. I have this little thing where I can like heart and I'm just going to do it. Woohoo! Does it actually do something? Whoa, why does it want me to sign in? That's weird. Excuse me while I just sit over here and type. Oh, do I not know my password? It's possible. Dang it. Um, chat, let me try that again. Oh, there's also one in here called stats. What is stats? Oh, uh, stats for my computer. I mean, you know, it's cool to see. Why not? That's true, I could always sell the cells. Also the batteries. <laughs> and I, I kind of did that, that was the first time I got off sync, is I bought cases, then I bought enough cells for the cases, and then I listed the cells, and then someone bought a bunch of cells, which is cool, happy to sell them. It just threw me off, because, you know, I'm not very organized, and then I didn't buy the right amount to actually even it out, but I probably will, I'll probably list those, and then just um, order some more so they're on the way. An 8x24 mech room, that's, so what is that, about 200 square foot for your mech room? I like it, that's, 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 it's very Matt Reisinger of you. Joseph, uh, these, I guess you could say that these are um, <laughs> Bean Brothers brand because I have had these custom made. And I yes, I have considered, I have considered just, because I'm ordering these as basically kits. They have all the pieces needed and then I just stick the cells in, do all the wiring and stuff. So I have considered just selling it as a kit. So somebody, I can send them uh, the four or three boxes of cells to get the 16 cells, as well as the case. And you can just assemble it as a rack mount case yourself. Um, I think that would be cool. I just have to, I guess I'd have to rebrand it a little bit because like I'm not gonna do a five year warranty on something that I didn't assemble. You know, if it's a DIY and someone else is assembling it, but I guess if I can make serial numbers and slap them on there for my stuff, then I could still sell them with the little, because they're going to have Bean Brothers um, 
and all the specs. Where did I leave that? I actually got that little thing sitting around here somewhere. I made this up and it kind of kind of got scraped off a little bit, but this is essentially what's going to be on the front of every battery just to kind of show the basic specs and you know someone setting up their charge controller or inverter they know what the limits of the battery are and what they should set their stuff to and it's going to show Bean Brothers logo on there and whatnot but I, I wouldn't mind selling the cases um, as they sit it's just a matter of me uh, stocking them and shipping them out and I actually do have the ability to ship cells now i don't know if you know this but you there's there's some hoops to jump through to be able to ship batteries um much less cells and certainly here in the u.s whether it's freight ups fedex like they all have these specific requirements for shipping batteries especially lithium batteries even though they're lithium iron phosphate they all fall into the same category as the exploding samsung batteries and scooter batteries and stuff so um you basically have to pay somebody uh, or a company that they can put their emergency phone number on the, every box. Um, that way, if in transit somewhere there's a problem, oh, that's right. That's why I set this mount aside. Some of the standoffs, I don't know if you can see this or not. I may have mentioned this in my last stream. This standoff right here, no, right here, depth perception's off, is taller than all the rest. You see that? Like, what the heck? Anyway, I guess that's one less case I can make. I, um, I should have had them send me a new one. All right, I'm going to look around for where I put my other back plates because I don't see the others. Here's one. Maybe this is it. I wasn't going to have them send me a brand new back plate for one battery. Hope this one's good. I wonder if I only have two cases left. That would stink. Maybe the one with the bad back plate I could just like install a JK BMS in to play around with. Wouldn't have CAN bus communication though. Okay, I need my package of little screws. Just reading the texts here. Let's see here. Grind it down would work. I wouldn't have it probably wouldn't be threaded anymore, but that's true. I can just cut it off. I could miss I could miss one screw on that thing. That's not a big deal, I suppose. So these are just um 100 amp BMSs, even though it's a 130 amp hour battery, which I realize is a little bit off. I'm curious though, guys, because like EG4 sells these things for, is it like, I mean, it depends on the sales, but I think the list price is like 1600 or 1650 for the, the, the lithium, the 100 amp hour lithium with with the screen the one without the screen is like 1500 i think um so if this one was with the screen but it was 130 amp hours and it was kit form like how much is it worth how much is it worth to do as a kit form versus assembled um because like i'm going to be selling these assembled for like 1800 because they're 130 amp hours, not 100 amp hours. So, does that mean that, like if it was 1500 as a kit, you get the cells, the BMS, the case, all the hardware to put it together. So for 1500 bucks, you basically be spending, I should be spending 100 bucks less than an EG4, but you don't get the, the warranty that you would get with EG4 or with me and you would get 30 extra amp hours. Like, would that be worth it? I don't know. I could always try it and see if people buy it. Um, <laughs> right now, I don't have enough stock to do, you know, sell it either way. So I guess I'll, I guess it's kind of a moot point right now. Um, okay, let's build. That's on there now. I need a front plate. I have one over here that's, like, partially built. Where is... Oh, 
Well, now I'm wondering if I left some stuff at the warehouse. I hope I didn't. Let's see what this looks like. This one's a little bit dinged up. I wasn't going to use that. But um, I'm hoping I'm going to the parts here. I think I left a box or two at the warehouse. I brought most of them in, certainly enough to build uh, with the cells that I had. But um, I think I left. I think I left some stuff. Anyway, I already put the, the front terminals on here, but I do need to put, oh, and it's already got a screen. I can set that screen aside. I do need to put uh, RJ45 breakout board, which I have in here. This should use these same tiny black screws. Escolta, you should. You should come down and buy some solar panels from me. What um what kind of solar panels? What kind of solar panels are you interested in? I always like it's one of those things, like I probably always end up having a variety, something used, something new, high and low wattage to try and hit like all those price points. There's, there's a pretty big, there's a pretty big following and reasoning to just buy brand new at this point, uh, which is why I'm trying to get into buying the grade B, but brand new solar panels like from Helene. I've, I've got access to those and we're able to get, you know, brand new solar panels for like 40 to 45 cents a watt, but then they qualify for the 30% tax credit. So that bring the, that brings the price down to more like a, a nicer used panel. And so it's like, and they're brand new. They don't necessarily have the full manufacturer warranty, but you, but you wouldn't get that with a used panel. You know, I'm sure used panels are all no warranty as is. So I'm kind of I'm kind of leaning towards most people are probably going to go into the I want a new panel, which I'm OK with, because also new panels, I don't have to go through and sort and test every single one and clean them like they're they're already good. I mean, in grade B, you're going to have like smears and stuff on them that someone's going to have to clean up. But, you know, have a little razor blade or your fingernail and it's no big deal. Um, but I'm also getting some used panels. I like I, I have 240s and 245s right now. I'm actually getting, um, I just got sent an invoice for it, so it should be here next week, assuming he's able to get to the job site and get him out of there. I'm getting some 220 watt panels, and the plan is to be able to sell those for like 40 bucks a pop for 220s, which is one of those things, a 220 watt 60 cell panel, like that's pretty old, but it's also 40 bucks. I don't know. Just reading again, so I can keep up with you guys. The Red Star, so you're asking, how about some 280 amp hour grade B cells and a 300 amp BMS instead? That's not a bad way to go. Honestly, the reason that I am, I'm not at more than 130 amp hours on this is because of the weight. Um, 130 amp hours, with this is about 100 pounds once it's assembled and it becomes an issue just moving it around like really this should be a two-person lift and so i'm sitting here building this and when i'm done like moving it from one bench top to the other because i have my inverter back there to be able to charge it up and balance it out and that's 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 a chore just getting it to the bench behind me um so if i had a 280 amp hour like basically i'd need to build it at the warehouse where i've got a forklift because I don't have two men to help me lift it, which isn't a bad thing. And honestly, I am looking at getting some metal cases made for the bigger cells. And I guess my plan is to basically put them on wheels or, you know, people just assume that, you know, I'll, I'll have them on a pallet here. We'll load them in your vehicle to take. And, uh, you know, or if it's a kit, I guess, you know, just come in a bunch of boxes and you could just build it in place or you know scoot it to where you need to go but that's to me that's the biggest thing with the big cells they're just not they're not very portable um that's it's 
I mean, if we look at like the the big boys, like Franklin whole home backup and the big Tesla, like the same way, they're a couple hundred pounds. So it's not like that's unheard of. Um, it's just a little less DIY friendly if you can't do it with one person. But you could do it. Just have more than one person. I don't know about the grade D thing is because <sighs> grades of cells, like what is the grade of a cell? And I've, I've watched some stuff on this and researched it. And I don't think there's, there's no official body showing what is a grade B cell. And I, my opinion right now is that you have cells. These cells in China are probably being built for EVs, electric vehicles. And a grade A electric vehicle cell is probably going to end up in an electric vehicle. I, I think probably some of them are sold otherwise. All the ones we get for solar storage are probably grade B electric vehicle cells. That's my best guess. I could ask someone in China, but they're not going to tell me the truth. So it doesn't, I haven't even bothered asking them. Um, some of them are a little more forthcoming and they're like, yeah, these are just the ones that you know, they, they, they didn't pass, pass the, the very cr crucial, crucial, specific, stringent, the very stringent tests that an EV battery, EV cells need to pass. So they're solar storage. And honestly, they're perfectly fine with solar storage. Like solar storage is a whole lot easier on cells than an EV application where you've got super high current going in and out of it. So my opinion is that a grade A solar storage battery is something like what I'm doing here. Uh, a grade A EV battery. So what is grade B? A grade B EV battery would be like what I'm messing with. A grade A solar storage battery? I, I don't I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. Now, if you're talking about like swell, swollen cells, I've heard that's like that's actually not a bad thing. Like they still work just fine. They're just swollen. Honestly, I wouldn't, I mean, if it works just fine, I don't care. Um, so I don't know. That's, that's, I don't know if you actually got my opinion out of that rant, but there it is. Yeah, Skulta, if you ever want to. I don't know, do you have my, um, if you don't have my phone number, I'll stick it in here. You can always text me or call me if you want. I'm not going to answer you right now because I'm using my phone. <laughs> but you could always ask here if you want. I'm happy to talk about it. <laughs> and there I go. I just advertised my phone number on YouTube, but it's my business number, so it's fine. Uh, so Joseph, half sill, black frame, newish to get the tax rebates. Yeah, I've actually, it's funny, I just saw an email come through. I've actually just purchased a couple pallets of brand new half sell black on black, um, transparent back sheet Trinas. They're 385s um, because they're on clearance. And I'm like, I mean, I may as well just buy some brand new panels to sell here. They're kind of expensive just because they are brand new panels, but they're still going to be like 45 cents a watt I'll be able to sell them for. Um, obviously shipping, you know, would almost kill that because shipping a single pallet, you, you might just, you know, buy something brand new from CED Green Tech or something locally instead of, you know, shipping. But then again, who knows? So yeah, if you want some brand new half cell black on black solar panels, let me know. So I'm needing the 3024 clone you got and a set of panels to max it out. What kind of deal would I get? Pick it up on Saturday. The 3024 clone, is that the, is that the Palmister three kilowatt you're talking about? Um, I know I've got the, uh, the newer one, the high voltage input. And then there's also the older one that can only do hundred volts input. So I don't have any of the high voltage input available. I've only got the one that I'm kind of doing some long-term testing with. It's actually running the AC at my warehouse right now. Um, I don't know why it took me this long, but I, I finally set up a little air conditioner to blow on me. And boy, it's just so refreshing at the end of the day to not have been sweating the whole day. Like, obviously, I have to go out and stack pallets or, you know, do this, do that. But, like, to be able to sit back down at my chair and there's 65-degree air blowing on me, that is really nice. Though there is something stuck in the AC fan, so every once in a while it starts rattling around and kicking something. Maybe it's like a hornet's nest or something because it was installed in my, in my garage window for a while. Um, I'll have to take it apart and look at that at some point, I suppose. So I don't have any of the high voltage ones. I do have some of the ones that do 100 volt input. I think I've got two of those left. I have some of the high voltage ones coming, but they won't be here for another month, maybe a month and a half. 
Okay, it's a low voltage unit we want. Yeah. What um so that one maxes out at like sixteen hundred watts. So if there were two hundred and forty five watt panels, that would be six of them. I mean, I can get you at, at you know sixty bucks a panel, and then the inverter charger is six hundred bucks. Six hundred? No, it's not six hundred bucks. It's five hundred bucks. I get you at five hundred. You let me know because those are slightly lower prices than I would typically do. But yeah, if you, you I can get you five hundred for the inverter charger and um, and uh, sixty a piece on the panels. If yeah, and, I, and I've got those all there. So and then of course if you need wiring and connectors and stuff too. Trying to thread the needle of the most savings as possible without sacrificing quality. It says everything, everyone's threshold on what they are willing to save is always different. Yeah, that's so true. Because I've talked to some people and I'm like, well, just take the tax credit. And I'm like, well, some people can't qualify for the tax credit. Some people don't want to bother. Some people don't have the money up front to pay for the new panels and then wait on the tax credit, you know, next year after the tax returns. And I'm like, some people, it's just easier to buy a good used panel and be done with it. And I support that, um, which is why I told my guy that I'll take a full truckload of 220 watt panels. Cause it's like, it's a good price. And I think I can pass that good price along. So for the people that just need a, an old used panel that still works good, let's do it. So Joseph's saying that in, in the Europe, the 400 watt panels are going for like 116 USD a piece. Is that brand new? 116 a piece? And why it's so much more expensive in the USA is it import tax? There's certainly an import tax problem. Problem, addition, whatever. Um, I don't know how much it is right now. I, I, thought it, I thought it got lowered back down to more like, you know, 10%. Um, I don't know, could it be, I can't imagine it's cheaper to ship. Like I'm thinking about how Europe, I mean, technically you could get to China via like a truck, but I, I kind of doubt anything is shipped via truck across Russia and the Middle East and whatnot. So they probably go through, was it the Bering Strait or whatever, the, uh, the other canal, the Suez Canal, as opposed to the Panama Canal. Um, so it's still shipped. Maybe it's import duties. Um, it could also be competition. I know that power in Europe is historically much more expensive than it is in America. So maybe the volume of solar panels that come in there is just so much higher that they've, they've been able to get the cost lower. I, I'm predicting, and you guys can call me out on this, I'm predicting that here in the U.S., in the next year or two, we're going to see much lower prices, on at least on brand new panels. And I'm sure that'll push the price down of used panels because we've had, you know, it takes months between, you know, if somebody says, hey, I want a container of panels from China and then them getting that container loaded, getting it to the U.S., getting through customs and then being available to sell. And I've seen some stuff where it's like, hey, we've got a container that showed up in the U.S. Our buyer fell through. Now we need to sell it at a discount. And I've seen that multiple times now where they're selling full containers for it looks like a lot less than what they would typically sell them for. And I think that's because the interest rates went sky high here in America. And so all of these residential jobs and maybe even commercial jobs started slowing down because it didn't make sense financially because our power is not expensive enough to take an 8% loan on solar to install it and actually make out. So I think that solar is going to be, at least for the short term, less expensive for the panels um, because of that. And it might go right back up again as soon as people stop importing so many containers. But I imagine there's a lot of containers that are on the way over where it's like, oh, the buyer fell through. So now I've got a container of panels coming over and I've got $130,000 tied up in it and I'm going to have to get rid of this thing. I'm not actually doing any work here. Um, this guy, this guy's good. So we'll see, but 115 for a brand new panel is really cheap. Hey, what's up? You said you would um play. <gasps> Did I say that at one o'clock? Can we do that? Can we do that? Yeah, it'll have to be after. 
your electronics time, but maybe later today. Should or maybe food? tomorrow when I get back. Because your, your electronics tends to be, I'm doing a live stream right now. Oh. But yeah, I'll play Smash Brothers with you. Maybe not today though, because your electronic time is going to be up soon. <laughs> Shane, yeah, government's too slow. Just get it done and save. I like that. By the way, you need to come pick up that Mega Revo from me. I've got three at the warehouse, and um, two of them are spoken for. I really need to get another order in for more of them. But um, so Joseph, so there's a thirty percent tax credit in German in the German government. So you get to like eighty one dollars after tax credit for a four hundred watt panel. That's just dirt cheap okay so joseph what are you are you over in germany like how many of the homes there have solar on them because like if you look at california and i don't live in california but i've seen a lot of pictures and video and stuff and it's like there's a lot like to, i mean obviously to the point of like new homes they like had to have a solar array in order to pass permitting and inspections right because they they want to to have the power locally at the house. Um, whereas in Texas, like there's neighborhoods you go to where there's nothing, there's no solar on any roofs. And it's not just because there's trees. It's just, there's just not any solar. And even in, in neighborhoods where there is solar, it might be one every five, one every 10 houses. Um, of course, it's mainly because we pay, you know, what, 12 cents a kilowatt hour for energy. And uh, a lot of times solar gets installed because the salesman pushes it, not because it makes sense. So. Dan, what kind of problems did you have with the USA tax credit? Because I, I submitted mine. It was for very little though because I did used panels, so I didn't really like. I, I got it for like the wire, the inverters, conduit, and stuff like that. So it was like four grand or something that I submitted it for. Um, but it was literally just me telling them this is how much I spent, and I just took the credit. Um, so I guess if I got audited, they, I would have to go dig up the receipts from that year which I, I think I filed those away somewhere, you know, showing what, what receipts there were for, for what, but I've got it all in um, my budgeting software, whatever, but yeah. All right, so let's see here. I actually had, I'm not very organized, but at some point I had actually created a document showing um, what lengths of wires I needed for everything in here. I couldn't find the document. I was like, where did I save that? I couldn't find it in the notes on my phone, my notepad on my computer, in Google Drive. So I guess I'll be figuring it out all over again. And I really should write it down. We'll see if I do. Um, I think I want to go ahead and load the cells in though, which means I need to clear out all my tools over here to get access to, oh, also, I'm so bad at planning. This is all the eight gauge wire I have left to run from the BMS to the battery and the BMS to the front terminal. So might be enough for two computers, two computers, two server racks before I'm out. This BMS from that other live stream that I did. Anybody want an ant BMS? Oh, that trash. I can go in the trash can or the trash box. Okay, so I need to get access to... I don't even have these plastic ones. Isn't this cute? This is the new crimper that I got from Timco because I wanted one here and one at the warehouse since uh, I'm doing stuff at both places. The other one is like big old massive one. This one's spring-loaded and you can operate with one hand. It takes a lot more pulls to get it done. It's pretty slick. Okay, so I've got my, oh, you know what I have to do too? I need to cut these into pieces. All right, so let's grab my cells here. See if anybody said anything. Nope. What was I gonna look at? I wanted to look at my stats. Oh, look at that, disk space available, 1.6 terabytes. I finally bit the bullet and did some upgrades on my laptop. I had a 256 gigabyte solid state in my laptop. And like it's solid state, so it was good, but it's like it was gonna run out quick. So I have one of these Dells that was a um, like a desktop replacement almost. So it's got three slots for M2 SSDs, 
and has four slots for RAM. So I just like added an SSD and added RAM. So now I'm at like 80 gigs, 80 gigs of RAM on a laptop, which is probably way overkill, but it's fine. All right, I need cells. If I open these boxes up, these are actually the cells that I already looked at from the other shipment. Um, I should probably think about... Yeah, this is how they're going to sit. This is already going to sit. Hey, so tight. Okay. Um, far side. So the battery kit is actually one that I have worked with um, a builder in Alibaba to do for myself. I don't know of any 130 amp hour kits out there other than this one. We were talking earlier about whether I'd be willing to sell the kit. And the answer to that is yes. Right now, it's really just a stock problem because, like, I've got this one and I think one more, but I, I between the two, I'm missing parts and stuff. So it's like, yeah, I'd love to sell it if I had it. So here we go. You can tell me if this is a kit that would be uh, that would be worth playing with. Or if you look at it and go, that's one of Bean's creations and that's too janky for me. Somebody else said something too. Joseph, okay, so you're in Portland, Oregon. You got family in Germany, yeah. Yeah, it's so much more expensive over there for energy. I've, um, I remember when, when was it? It was the beginning of, like, I know it's always been more expensive, but I was, I was thinking back to when the Ukraine was getting invaded by Russia initially. And like the, um, I think it was a, it was an oil pipeline. You, I'm sure you know better than I do. Either an oil pipeline or a gas pipeline from Russia, and it got shut down, sabotaged, whatever it was. I think there's a whole drama around that, which just of course caused energy prices in Europe in general to just spike. And weren't you guys? I think you guys were looking at like I say you guys or your family. Germany was looking at like. 50 cents or more per kilowatt hour. And that was just like standard rate. That wasn't even like peak rates. It was just, just 50 cents. And I'm sitting there thinking, like the only thing that's gonna happen, like, it would have to happen. People are going to be setting up solar arrays in their backyards or in their gardens, as they say in Europe. Or is that, is that a Europe thing or is that a, um, a British thing? I don't know, the garden. Um, and I have, I've seen it, I've seen it a lot. And a lot of people were criticized on the DIY Solar group and Facebook for having some uh, fairly janky setups for solar panels. And it's like, dude, when it's like a matter of, this is gonna bankrupt me to have to pay 50 cents a kilowatt hour, like, I'd be setting up janky solar panels. That's just a, uh, you just gotta get by, you know? I get somehow. <sighs> three, so, okay, so you're saying in, you only get three and a half hours of sun. Is that the, um, Joseph, is that the sun hours? Like uh, when I do a PV watts calculation for a southern facing array here in North Texas, I get a 4.6. So if I have you know 4.6 times my solar array, that's the average of how many kilowatt hours I generate 
each day. Of course, that's average because like December is like high twos and then in August it'll be like six and a half or seven, um, at least for me here. I'm curious if that's the number you're talking about, that three and a half. That's definitely low, three and a half hard. I saw some people talking in um, like Ireland and just way up north, Wales. Those are, that's rough. When you first have a lot of clouds, but you're also way far north. All right, two cells left over in there. All right, let's see uh, what set tight saying in here. So Setite's asking about whether I've looked at uh, looked at or heard of or whatever using vertical mounted bifacials. Um, and I assume that it would be vertical in the sense that the sun would be hitting it. Oh gosh, the sun would be hitting the side of the panel, like in the winter, right? So it would, it would kind of go around here. And so yeah, at solar noon, there'd be no sun on the panel, but in the morning and in the afternoon, you would be hitting one side of the panel or the other. Um, I have not, I don't, haven't actually seen that paper. I'd love to read that paper. Um, it kind of makes sense. I mean, why not? And trackers, it's one of those things, like everyone says trackers are expensive and they are, and there's maintenance to them. However, the grid, the, the, the grid, the commercial operators still use trackers. They use East West trackers. So it'd be interesting if they moved to something like that. Um, because every time the solar panels become less expensive, then the trackers are relatively more expensive. Because, I mean, that's they're not really going to come down in price that much for trackers. You're going to be, whereas solar panels, they, they've got room to come down, I think. So, makes sense. But, yeah, you've got to get a hold of some cheap bifacials. Um, like, ooh, I had a thought. Okay, so bifacials. I'm gonna go on a rant and I'm gonna go back and look at the, the, the other things. Um, if y'all been around me, you've probably seen my, my rants about bifacials and how there's two, generally two methods to build a bifacial. Because these are, not all, the big commercial bifacials, like the 525 to 650, 700 watt panels, there's definitely a consideration to how heavy this panel is, right? And so with bifacials, they go one of two routes that I've seen. And I, I read a paper on this, or at least an article. Um, they either make it with like the 3.2 millimeter tempered glass on the front, which is what most solar panels are made out of, or they make it out of like hardened glass, not tempered, and they put that two millimeter hardened glass on both the front and the back. So when they put the tempered glass on the front, it's thicker and heavier, and so they do a transparent plastic back sheet, transparent vinyl, whatever it is. So you don't have a dual glass panel. When you hear dual glass, and I, I can't say this is how they all are, but everything I've seen, if it's dual glass, it's not tempered, it's hardened. And th there's definitely a difference with like hail or impact damage, right? Tempered is better. Um, but there's some places that don't deal with hail near as much as like, you know, Oklahoma, Texas. There's, there's like this area in the center of the, the, like the Midwest down to Texas. Um, and if you're not in a place that has bad hail, then doing a, a non-tempered glass could be okay. And in places where corrosion is, is a big deal or heat, so like the Arizona desert, where you've got a lot of solar panels out there, dual glass could make a lot of sense because you're not going to have peeling back sheets and stuff from it getting super, super hot over and over and over and over again every day. And I've definitely seen that on 15-year-old panels. Like, that back sheet starts getting pretty uh, pretty fragile, I would say. And at some point, it just starts peeling and cracking. And I don't know if that's necessarily... I mean, there's probably things you can do manufacturing-wise to get that to be better. But, I mean, glass is tough. Um, and if you're not dealing with impact resistance then just having some glass on the back and some glass on the front, like that, that would help with that longevity of the panel in that sense. 
All that to say, there's a guy up in Oklahoma here that has some 655-watt bifacials. And if you had them straight up and down, like, I feel like it would be more resilient to hail than if they were tilted. I mean, hail does go sideways. It's not straight up and down, but it would probably have a better chance against hail. It's thought. Maybe you could use dual glass panels, um... Because you probably want to do dual glass for that and not have a transparent plastic back sheet. You probably perform better. I, I don't really know. Um, but yeah, that might be an application where even in the hail territory, you could use a dual glass panel. There's a thought. Uh, let's see. Yeah, east west verticals, so early morning, late evening solar, maximizing hours. Yeah, and if you look at, like, um, I was doing some calculations for putting east-west solar panels instead of south solar panels. And, like, I think it's, like, a 10% drop in output over the, over the day if you had east and west instead of just south. So it's, like, it's not that bad. Uh, it's, it's, it's probably more output in the, uh, or more drop in output in the winter than it is in the summer. Honestly, in the, in the summer, it's probably better that way. <laughs> so Germans are using the bifacial panels for fencing. I love it. I wonder how they get around uh, councils for that because, like, I imagine they've got some good conduit running because it's, I would imagine it's exposed. Like, if you have a bifacial as a fence, like, it has to be exposed if you've got both sides getting light. Um, or maybe they run at a lower voltage or something. Okay, I need to cut little guys for in here. Did I leave... Oh, I actually do have that thing here. That's right. Let me bring it. I, um, as you know, I do stuff here, do stuff at the warehouse. And then I hope that the tool that I need is where I need it. Here we go. The tool that I need. definitely not being held up by like rubber bands or something. So I need coffee just like let's see how that works. <laughs> Hopefully that's not too terribly loud. Um, let me know. I can mute it while I do this if I need to. That was just a little bit wide. Sounds okay. Got some ASMR going on here. Okay. You can buy, so Joseph's talking about the, uh, the wall, the fences made of panel. You can buy kits, U or H shaped, posts in concrete, slide panels down, and cables are hidden in the posts in the top rail. That is awesome. And I guess that works because the cables come out right at the edge because they got the junction boxes down the, down the middle of the panel and right at the edge. So it wouldn't be very exposed if you're sliding it down into an H post. So that's slick. <laughs> Monkey wax. Okay, I won't. I won't save it for a. <laughs> I won't save it for my ASMR channel. Thanks. <laughs> I 
I'm being silly, I don't have an ASMR channel. But if you're into that sort of thing, my, um, my dad has a YouTube channel. He does ASMR. That guy can crank out some videos, let me tell you. Okay, now I've got to remember what I did. So these cells are slightly loose in here, and I like them to be nice and tight. I have, I have a thing. Ah, there they are. I have these. All right. So what I do is pull this one back out. And push some, what is this like? EVA foam or something like that. It's pretty dense stuff. That way it can hold all my stuff in place. You know, I hadn't gotten into financing. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how financing for DIY solar would work. I mean, I guess it wouldn't work like the like the big boys, regardless. Because I know that when like solar financing in general, and I know I know just enough to be dangerous here. It's very um, how do you say it? A lot of requirements for it, obviously, because they're financing like sixty thousand dollars, eighty thousand dollars, right? So they want to make sure that everything is installed properly before they actually hand out the money. So the installation company will have to provide a whole bunch of photos showing this is how it was installed, and some of them are like, you know, this is the uh, uh, we passed permitting, you know, um, things like that, in order to actually fund uh, the project. So, project's got to be done before it's funded. Um, so, I don't know exactly how, how this would work, unless it was financed through, like, Shopify or something, I suppose, because Shopify does, um, does financing. Which is kind of funny, because I almost, I almost went with Shopify for my website, but um, I ended up doing WooCommerce instead. So, I mean, I could always see if there's a financing thing that would work through, uh, through there. Setite saying he used financing to get the inverters. A firm. Oh, is a firm a um is that a is that a, a method of financing? No, I had not I had not actually had not heard of a firm. So there you go. Okay. So with this thing, what I do is I need yet another piece of epoxy board. And then this guy's gonna go right here. Oh, you know what? This is the part where I should really double check that I got my cells in order. <laughs> so here is my main negative. Negative, and then we go. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive to negative. That looks right. So I got my main negative, main positive right here up at the front. That looks good. Okay. Now, there's also room, I think you guys can see it, um, a fair bit of room. We're going to fix this next time. One thing, so the beauty of me making these and then testing them out, this thing's kind of flimsy. It's just a flat piece of um, very cheap steel. And this is what's holding in the battery. It holds it in fine. The problem is I want to stuff this area here nice and tight so the cells can't just like move around. And if I stuff it in so tight, then it kind of bows out. But then also like there's too much space here. I don't need this much space. So they're actually going to build some reinforcing on this plate so that A, it's stronger and B, it takes up some of the space. So this next set of batteries that I get, or cases that I get, will be just that much better. The, uh, the first ones they sent me to, if you were here at the beginning, you saw um, these that sit along the top. 
and right now they sit just uh, just maybe a quarter inch above the cells. Um, and then I'll stick some of that EVO, EVA foam down so that this holds the cells down. But the, the original ones were like a good like inch or so up above the cells. And I'm like, that's a lot of space to take up. Like that's, that's silly. So we got it sh shrunk down so that it's just barely up above. You got to leave a little space because when they say a cell is, you know, 45 millimeters wide, it could be 46. And if you have eight cells that are 46 millimeters instead of 45 millimeters, and you made the case to be able to fit 45 millimeters, you're not going to fit them in there. You know, you got to make up eight millimeters. You got to stretch something eight millimeters. And um, so it's like, it's, it's kind of a necessary evil to have to have spaces in here that you take up with something like a, a hard foam or something. So anyway. So tight saying they offer no interest pay every two week options, as well as low interest monthly payment plans. I'll have to check that out, affirm. Okay, so it's like a personal loan thing where it's like 3,000 or less. That's, that's, it's probably pretty high interest then too. But you're saying it was a, uh, a no interest. I guess maybe they're, maybe they're relying on you won't pay it off in that amount of time and then it'll roll into a, a more high interest loan that they make some money off of. Wow, that's pretty slick. I'll have to look into that. It's one of those things like in general, I don't like financing because you can really get into trouble spending money that you don't have. Um, but it is, it is a neat option. I don't have my knife with me. One sec. My kids uh, used up all their electronics time, so now they're watching mom play Minecraft. That's how that works. All right, this is about right. And then I'm gonna cut this right there. This might be too, uh, too thick. I might have to trim it additionally. Yeah, that's... Mm. Yeah, it's too much. Too much. So how am I going to make this thinner? I think we need a long blade. Yeah, 0% interest for three months and then it went crazy. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm sure it's just a numbers game. Because they're like, if we can get... Um, you know, for every for every five people that pay it off within three months, there's another five that don't, and then they can get you know twenty percent interest. Then it makes sense to them. Sure, it's interesting uh, collecting on loans like that though, because they don't even have. I mean, I don't know what information they get you from you. I'm sure they get all the information from you, but it's not like a it's not like a brick and mortar where they can grab like a driver's license and they know where you live and all this stuff. I mean, I guess they do, but maybe it's not really, maybe it's not really any different. Okay. I realize that this part is a little more sketched than most of it. Oh, now it's too thin. Maybe this one's thicker. This will be better next time I build because, 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 because they will have shrunk this space. That's why. It's too much. It's too much. I just need to take the sliver off. I probably had some of this stuff prepped last time I did it. And here I am doing it all in front of you guys.
Sorry, just catching up here. Setat was saying they charge uh, they charge a fee to the retailer of like 6% if, if a firm is used to fund the order. Um, so it kind of makes sense. And then it would be a matter of, do I just say, oh yeah, you know, I wouldn't have gotten that sale without a firm and just take the hit or do I raise my prices a little bit somehow? That's hard because it's like, where do you... Like, I want to give everyone a good deal, you know? Like, I don't want to run 50% profit margins or 100% profit margins just for just for the people that might use a firm. Okay, that's better. I just need to trim it down. the epoxy board right up against the battery and then I need to close my knives so I don't drop them onto my exposed toes and I need where did I put those little screws I think these are supposed to be the longer screws but these should be fine oh there's the longer screws two three four And my screwdriver. Where did I leave my screwdriver? Don't mind that, it was just someone calling me. Maybe that's one of you. Oh yeah, you made a so set type made a server rack battery of 918650s. That is and he says never again. And that's, honestly, that's the reason I never, like, I mean, I guess I kind of came in late to the game. Like, Jehu Garcia and um, who's the guy in Australia that, like, really pioneered the beautiful 18650 batteries. Um, like, they were already going strong by the time I got into any of this. Um, and so I saw the, the lithium iron phosphate and I saw the 18650s and I was like, it's not, it's not really worth it to go do the spot welding thing with all these little, yeah, and so I just didn't. And even the, um, and y'all remind me his name, even the dude out in uh, Australia, like he's not, he's not doing the 1850s anymore. He, uh, the last video I, or, actually I think it was on Facebook, he owns one of the groups or at least co-moderates like the DIY battery group. I don't know if he actually owns it or if that's a battery hookup group. I was, I'm kind of confused now. So I thought it was a battery hookup group, but it might be his group. Anyway, he was talking about how he was doing um, uh, lithium iron phosphate big cells because it's like, it just makes so much more sense now. It's crazy. I appreciate it, the Red Star. I mean, that's kind of the point. I know that live streams are like super long and hopefully it's more about the interaction and seeing and this is kind of like a, a side thing, you know, that I'm actually building something and you can ask me questions about it. May, may the algorithm be in your favor. I appreciate it. Yeah, LFPs are just so, so inexpensive. Um, I mean, for somebody that their time is not as valuable. It could still make sense, I suppose. It just takes so much time to put together an 18650 battery. It'd be crazy. Um, which is probably what some people are thinking when I'm putting it together, a 130 amp hour battery. Like, you could spend about the same amount of time putting together a 280 amp hour. But like I talked about earlier, it just gets really heavy. Really heavy. Oh, there's 10 watching? That's awesome. I know quite a few of you were on the chat, but I don't have the I don't have the stats up showing how many you're actually watching. Okay, so I want to throw some bus bars on here. Seems like a good next step to do. I wonder. About to find out if they sent me the same types of bus bars as I got in the last set of batteries. No, they didn't. 
I think I asked them to do the flexible bus bars this time, so that's kind of on me. Um, I prefer I prefer these over the straight ones um, because if a cell needs to move, like at least that's flexible. If the cells like, because they're gonna they're gonna expand and contract a little bit when they're charging and discharging, so I'd rather have it. I'd rather have a flex in the bus bar than to either slide under the nut back and forth or you know hurt the terminal of the battery itself or the cell itself. So I may have requested that, but now I've got to worry about. Whether I've got enough of the same type. You know what? I can just build it all with. I'll build it all with the flex bars. Yeah, that's more of the solid ones. I've got more flex bars. Because you end up with an extra one every time you build a battery. So I've got a collection of them up at the warehouse. Alright, so we're going to connect that, 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 that. And I need to go open up a couple more boxes to grab more bars. Since I'm not going to use these solid ones. Thing you don't get extra of are the little serrated nuts. So, at some point, I just had to go to Amazon and order another set of stainless steel M6 nut M6 serrated nuts because I've inevitably lost a few and I kept getting behind. I'd be like having to open up another bag for the next set of cells in order to make up this battery. So there I go. I dropped them on the ground, but I know I've got more of them somewhere at the warehouse. But you know. Do, 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 do. Do, do. Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to do a live stream at the warehouse. I've got a, uh, I've got a Victron set up that someone brought by and wanted me to get wired up. So it'd be cool to do, be cool to do that, sitting in the air conditioning at the warehouse as a live stream. Because I have no idea what I'm doing other than the fact that you know, it's a 3,000 watt inverter at 24 volts. So, you know, I can probably figure out what gauge wire to put on that. All right, so that makes it all the way around. You guys can kind of sort of see what I'm doing here. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, far side, building in place. It's, if you're DIYing, that does make sense. Just build it in place and don't move it. It would really stink to ever have to move it. Like if um, you ever have to rebuild a whole battery or <laughs> you're moving. Uh, houses and want to take it with you. I guess you just load them up in boxes or something. But um, yeah, if you're putting together a bunch, just just build them in place, and then you can use the bigger cells. Don't worry about it. Thanks for the thumbs up. Appreciate it, you guys. Set tight. Yeah, you found some cheap 305 amp hour cells. I think, I think what's happening, this is opinion by B, I think what's happening is the, uh, the 280 amp hour size, like physical size of cell, is the same physical size up to 320 amp hours. So it's really a matter of what did they test it? And this kind of goes back to the EV battery versus the solar storage battery. So the ones that are testing, you know, below 320 amp hours are probably the ones that are getting tossed aside for solar storage. Or maybe there's something else like internal resistance or something else that's just not quite right. Um, maybe they can't handle 3C or 5C discharge rates. Um, but anyway, 
I think that's the deal is that it's it's the 280 amp hour size. I've actually just ordered, um, I did just order a bunch of 304. Actually, I don't remember which ones I got. I may have just gotten the 280s um, as opposed to the 304s, but I mean, I figure it's basically the same thing. I think I bought, I think I bought the 304s, but then ordered some of those to have them because there's still people that want to build in place and that's more cost effective than doing 130 amp hour batteries. You can run the like 200 amp BMS if you want, run the bigger wires, and only have to wire it up once. And realistically, um, you know, for a cabinet or something, you're probably still going to need like two of those. So you can still have redundancy in that sense if your BMS ever goes south and you're on one. The fire arrester. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that fire arresters are going to become more available as time goes on because people like, you know, EG4 has fire arresters in their UL9540 batteries um, and their brand new one, the wall mount one. So I'm sure that, um, I'm sure they're going to become more available and people are going to start throwing them up on Amazon or something. Maybe I should get some and stock them. Um, and yes, these, these bus bars are in fact flexible. So they're like, what are these? They're two layers of copper and then they put that hump in the middle. They press that hump in the middle. So they do have flex to them, which is nice. Yeah, Setite was talking about using the JK BMS and you know, the two amp balancing. I think it'd be fine. I was actually looking at, I actually got some fairly long term data on that. I built out a 24 volt battery with EVE 230 amp hour cells and I used, um, I used the JBD BMS with like, what is it, 100 milliamp passive balancing. Uh, now I balanced out the battery with an active balancer when I built it and then I sold it and he used it over the winter. So it's got like two or 300 cycles on it, full cycles, according to the JBD BMS. Um, and then he swapped it in for a larger battery. So I, I took it back. Um, that thing, I charged it up the other day. That thing is still very close in balancing. It's not perfect. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm using that for my air conditioner setup. So. I'm going to continue charging and discharging and see how well it does. But when it was full, like one of the cells was up at 3.6, 3.65, but the lowest cell was like 3.45, 3.45 volts, which is like 99% charged. So I was really happy with it. And that was with a 230 amp hour cell. Now, I did build somebody a 24 volt pack with 280s with that with a similar BMS and it, it couldn't it couldn't keep him in check. Within a month or two, he called me. He's like, yeah, they're, they're shutting off. The cells are off. And so we ended up, um, I got them active balancers and just, uh, I didn't charge them for them um, to put on the 24 volt battery to keep it in check. And that's kind of why I went down to the route of checking out the JKs because for building a smaller pack, like 130 amp hour, the passive balancing should be fine as long as they're good cells. But if I'm going to stock the 304 amp hour batteries, I really need something more than passive balancing to keep them in check. Um, so, so I'm checking out the JK stuff, see if see if that'll see if that'll do the trick. And then of course I installed the JK BMS on a battery that was already balanced, and so it kind of eliminated that as a test. <laughs> it's like, well, that was silly. Um, which number is this? Number two? Yes, I need a number two. Here. All right, so there's all my choices. Let's start with number one. That seems like a good place to start. Check and see what y'all are talking about. Yeah, the red star. I, I agree the bigger amp hour you get. There's, if you look at the dollar per kilowatt hour, like there's a sweet spot somewhere in there where you'd have to calculate the cells versus like the BMS that you're using. Because obviously if you only need a couple hundred amps, then, and you're, and you're having to build, you know, four batteries, 
um, you know, doing 100 amp BMS for four batteries, that adds up itself. But usually, once you get to like 280 or 304, if you go any higher than that, like you get the 320 amp hour, then you pay a premium because now you're getting the 320 amp hour about to sell. Um, but for the most part, you know, going from a 50 amp hour, 100 amp hour, 150, it's it gets less expensive per kilowatt hour up until you reach about 300 or so, and then it starts getting more expensive because you're getting the premium sell. <clears throat> Just looking in here to see where my okay I start on the left with my number one and I'm being dangerous about this and actually plugging it in generally I like to leave this unplugged while I'm wiring it up and this is how I tell people to do is to leave it unplugged while you're wiring it up that way you can check all your wiring with your multimeter after you get it wired up without smoking the BMS I'm going risky on it I forgot to put my bars in here and that's gonna be important so what I need to do here is grab my EVA thumb. I end up cutting this stuff in half. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Yeah, you can see what I'm doing. Your EG4s want 300 amps each. They shouldn't be 300 each. I mean, unless you're kind of going overkill on the BMS so that you're not running it right up to the limit. Because a 6,500 watt, like a 200 amp BMS would be just about 10,000 watts. So really 200 should be fine, but I mean, it doesn't hurt to have a bigger BMS than needed as long as you're not using it for overcurrent protection, which if you've got multiple batteries, you shouldn't be doing. You should have a, a fuse or breaker to handle that. I just ordered some of the uh, <laughs> some of the Palmister 10,000 watt split phase inverters to see how those things look. That'll be fun. I still haven't decided whether I want to try and swap those swap my Mega Revo 8Ks for the Palmister 10Ks and actually run my house off of them or not. It would be a lot of work, but I could. Yeah, at this point, I feel like the BMS guys should just go for active balancing because <sighs> along, the, along the talk of like EV versus solar storage grades, you know, wh why not use the lower grade batteries with an active balancer? As long as, as long as the active balancer can keep it in check, then it's fine. Now, some batteries are bad enough that like we shouldn't go that low of a grade. I've got a 100 amp hour battery that I bought from a seller that I refused to buy from again because he wouldn't he wouldn't make it right where one of the cells if you put it under like a 20 amp load starts just sagging real bad compared to all the other cells and the same thing when you're charging if you're charging it like 20 amps and this is a 100 amp hour battery charging it like 20 amps then it'll start spiking up to like three and a half volts even though it's at like a nominal state of charge like a 20 30 40 percent state of charge that one cell will jump up to three and a half volts. So like if there's a battery with, or a cell with really bad internal resistance, no, we don't want to use it for solar storage. Um, unless it's super, super, super cheap, you know? Um, if you can get something super, super cheap and you can only charge it at like, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 C, and you've got enough storage where that's as fast as you charge it, then cool, let's do it. As long as that's a known, as long as that's a known quantity. I should put my disclaimer at the uh, on the description and title of my video. <laughs> These are all thoughts of being. Who knows if they're right or not. Okay, so sit tight. So for your EG4 6500, it says 153 amp BMS. That, that makes sense. 153 amp BMS though, that's, no, I guess that's right, because if you say it's a 6,500 watt inverter, but it's like, you're going to have 15% losses, then that would be, yeah, I think that's, I think that comes out right. So yeah, that makes sense. But 300 amp hours of battery. See, 300 amp hours would be like 15 kilowatt hours. 
That makes sense to have as a reasonable number. It's probably also probably also thinking about like lead acid batteries, so it would really be like seven and a half. And you got to think that those those inverters pull just themselves probably pull like seventy watts idle. I'm guessing. Or well, those sixty five hundreds are those the those aren't the split phase. Those are the one twenty volt, right? So they would be like yeah, they'd be like seventy watts. I think you can you can you can correct me. I try and use my memory and it's not always the best. The cool thing about um, BMSs that'll communicate, and I was trying to get these JK BMSs ordered that would communicate. They want me to order like 200 units or something to be able to configure the CAN bus to be able to communicate. So maybe I can do that in the future and stock, uh, or if somebody knows of some that'll communicate CAN bus to an inverter, let me know. Because I wouldn't mind paying a premium for one that would. Um, you could have an inverter, like my Mega Revos, since it can communicate over CAN bus, they can actually, the battery will tell the inverter, hey, I'm only good for 100 amps. And so the inverter will then only ever pull 100 amps or, or charge at 100 amps. So you could actually have a larger system with a smaller battery and it would current limit, which is pretty slick because it would do it automatically. As opposed to having multiple menu items where it's like, well, if you're AC charging, you can be this much. If you're PV charging, you can be this much. And then together you can be this much. And it's just, there's never enough granularity to get it right. Whereas if you can just be like, hey, whenever you're charging, don't go over this amount, it's better. Really, you just need more granularity. Okay, split phase of paired, yeah. It's too bad that it's up to 90 watts. I measured my, um, my Mega Revos, those are 8,000 watt inverters, and they pulled like 71 watts idle. For the, for the split phase, of course they're not low frequency, um, which those, I don't think those are low frequency either. I think those are high frequency. So they're, they got that advantage going for them, um, power wise. Because the, um, the 6000, the EG4 6000 has the transformer built in to get 240 volt. And that thing pulls like 120 or 150 watts at idle for the one 6000 watt inverter, which is crazy. I have someone that has, he doesn't have the EG4 version, but he has the MPP. And uh, yeah, with two of them, <laughs> it's pulling like 220, 250 watts, just the inverters idling. And it's like, that's a lot of energy to be losing. Okay, so this white wire, oh, this is my number one, white wire. So this guy, I forget, did I run him? through? Pretty sure I did. I'm going to need some little ring terminals. These are, and you can probably see what these are. These are from DigiKey. They're pretty slick. I've been using these for years and have not found anything that's been better. I guess the only thing is that they're not insulated, but I mean, they're inside the battery. Oh, I don't want to use that yet. I want to snip it first, because I do actually snip my wires to the right length. Right there. Actually, did I last time? I want to snip them this time. We'll see how this goes. Oh great, then i got to strip them. But that's not so bad. There's my main negative. Hopefully I can get this done before dinner time. And that's what I started on working. Negative. Let's make sure I get this right. Let's see. Temperature sensor one, ground for temperature sensor, and battery zero. Which is my main negative terminal. Alright. This one. Going right there.
Just reading, you guys. Just reading. Yeah, so tight. You're saying the inverters are cheap, but they cut corners. And it's like, I mean, I guess you have to, right? Like... Ben C, 108 degrees in Austin right now. Yeah, I hadn't been outside but once today, but I heard it came back up. Have you, like, has it been okay the last two days? I was looking at my energy consumption. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. Um, I'm going to pull this up. Because this is, this is really, this is interesting to me. Where is this? Display capture. Okay. No, I really want to do window capture. Where's my... Hold on. Do -do -do -do. Window capture. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so check this out. Um, so these are, this is my house. So if we look here, I'll make sure this is actually showing up for you guys. It looks like it is. It looks a little weird. Hold on, let me stretch this out. We'll sacrifice that. Okay. So this is my house. You can see that like August 13th, we used... 130.9 kilowatt hours for the day and like 146 two days before that like it was brutal when it was getting up to 105 108 degrees here it's amazing and then you look at like yesterday and the day before we're down below 100 kilowatt hours that's literally just the temperature outside going from 105 to 95 like 95 i can do i can do 95 105 is brutal and as you can see, it's an extra like 40, 50 kilowatt hours a day just to keep our house cool. And our upstairs AC, like when it's 105 outside, it starts running, like it'll cycle up until like maybe noon. And after noon, it's, it's running and just trying to keep it below 80 degrees until um, well after the sun goes down. Well after the sun goes down. You can probably see that in here. Let me see. If we go into uh, charts and we look at... Let's look at the last seven days. So, like you can see it cycling in here, up, down, up, down. And then here at about, yeah, 1225, you can see that we go up to about 5,000 watt load. You know, and there's other stuff that runs off and on throughout the day, but it didn't shut off until 11 o'clock at night is the first time the AC cycle off. And then even then it's like half on, half off until the morning time, right? till five in the morning. And that's probably because at night I had it set to a lower temperature, it's probably 76 up there. And then I move it to 78 right at 5 a.m. So that chills for a little bit and then kicks back on again. But um, yeah, but you can see like yesterday, 16th, it actually cycled off in the afternoon, even at like five in the afternoon. Like it's still working hard, but big difference, big difference. And also you can see how it's actually exporting to the grid. Um, on this day here, I did a little bit, and then the last two days. I actually have supported like 26 kilowatt hours yesterday, which is crazy. 23 kilowatt hours yesterday. Anyway, let's swap that back off. Yeah, we're set to, we're probably at about 75 downstairs, to be honest. And upstairs 76 at night, and then like 78 during the day. Hey, what's up? I was just wondering what you were doing. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm talking to the camera. Actually, I'm talking to these people. And they're texting me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Use 55 kilowatt hours a day. I'm, I'm glad you're more efficient than I am. Um, I don't know if you can tell. My house is also partly under construction, which doesn't help a lot. But, you know. Oh yeah, we're missing some carpet upstairs, Jacob says.
Oh yeah, I bet the city of Austin's brutal about permits. I bet. Yeah, the Red Star, feel free to feel free to reach out. Sorry it's taking me so long here. Setai, no, I did not have an electrician do my install. Um, however, here in Texas, the land of the free, as a homeowner, I can do my own install, permitted. So I did a grid tie installation two years ago with a pair of six kilowatt inverters. And um, as far as the city knows, that's what I have installed. So figure if I'm exporting less than the 8.3 kilowatts I've got on the roof, then everything will be fine. Bin C. Yeah, lots of spray foam. That would be that would be nice. Mine was built in 76 and um, it's three times the size of my old house. Not quite three times. So it's 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 honestly a little bigger than I need, but uh, I couldn't resist. Couldn't resist. Alright, I'm gonna run this one over to I just feel like I'm doing this back. I don't know why I feel like I'm going backwards. But I know this is right. So sit tight, you're saying you think you can do your own work too. Didn't want to bother with the permit. Oh, because your current panel's not up to code and you don't want to move it, yeah. Um, that's actually, if you're talking about that light there, that's not a door, that's actually a window. Or are you talking about that door? Is that? Um, that door is also not the tightest. That door needs to be replaced. It is more or less airtight. The problem is that it's, it's all wood and, um, starting to fall apart. So I have definitely like piece that back together and caulked it up which is yeah the thing is that whole front wall around the door needs to be replaced that just all needs to be ripped out it's one of the things on my to-do list or sell enough solar panels to pay someone else to do it as part of their to-do list <laughs> Did I stack the inverters? So the initial six kilowatt inverters, um, they were just grid tie. I mean, they were those, you may have seen them on the YouTube channel. They were the Solar City ones that could do um, batteryless off grid, uh, which is why I played with them, because I had them. And since they are, since they're grid tie inverters, you, know, you can just stack them, it's no problem. There's nothing special about it. So I just ran them to two what, 35 amp breakers into my panel. Um, worked out nicely. Now I just need another, another 10 kilowatt of panel and another 80 kilowatt hour of battery and I could actually run uh, more or less off grid. But as it is, when it's 105 outside, it's all we can do. I've got 12,000 watts of solar. It's all we can do to run from a full battery at 5 a.m. and run on battery and solar until 8 p.m. We get down to like 10% battery every day when it's 105 out. It's crazy how much energy it takes. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. If you can see daylight, you're losing air. Um, we won't talk about the fact that this room here has a uh, has no floor in it for the most part, and it just opens up to the crawl space. And there's definitely some cracks and stuff in there. There there are things we could do to make this house better, but there's a lot of things that I've done that have made this house better. There was about that much insulation in the attic when I moved in. 
um, and I've got Radiant Barrier up there and all kinds of things that I, I, I honestly can't imagine how much energy this house used. Even when it was brand new, it was all electric heat, like just heat strips. Like, can you imagine heating 4,600 square feet with single pane wood windows? Um, like, I, I don't, I don't even know. That's just crazy. Which is why they had 320 amp service to this house. They knew they'd need it. I do not use any um, antiox between the terminals. All of these terminals are tinned, all these pieces. So in that sense, they're actually all the same. From what I understand, they're all the same chemically. So oxidation shouldn't be a problem, and I have not noticed it. You know, I should take, I should take a bus bar off of that battery um, that 24 volt I talked about that's had a couple hundred cycles on it and see what it looks like. Um, it was also in a not conditioned space. So if anything got some moisture available to oxide, that would be it. But no, I haven't worried about it. You install a radiant barrier, the problem is it keeps the car engine heat in too. That's <laughs> Yeah, I suppose that is a problem, isn't it? I um I did not end up doing any radiant barrier in the garage. I did at one point have somebody come in and uh, blow a bunch of insulation into the attic, which helped immensely. That was a huge difference. So thankful I did that kind of bit the bullet. At one point we were kind of working in the garage in order to rebuild solar panels and I was just like, I just, I need this. So I just bit the bullet and had him do it. I didn't have time to at that point, but um, it's kind of nice that that's done now. This is the part where if this is a video on demand, I would just, you know, fast forward through it all. You guys wouldn't know exactly how long it takes to crimp and feed a bunch of wires. I need some milk. Right there. Yeah, air tightness is a big problem. That was one of the things I did when I first moved in was they had can lights throughout this whole house. Um, I can only imagine how hot it was with all those can lights because they just popped up into the attic with no real barrier. Like, first of all, no insulation on top of them because they're can lights. You can't put insulation on them or they burn the insulation. And then second of all, um, there were just holes throughout the can. And so I had to go up there and fix all that. So there's a lot of things I had to do before I even put insulation in. One thing I missed, and I thought I, I thought I had checked for this. One thing I missed is we have a lot of those pocket doors. And something I just noticed, I don't know why I didn't notice it before. Something I just noticed this past week was how much air is coming in from the attic through the pocket door into the living space. Um, it's bad enough that we have this Jack and Jill bathroom and it's of course it's on the west side of the house So the Sun's just hitting over there and it has Pocket doors dividing it up. So you have like shower on one side toilet in the middle or shower and a vanity Toilet and then another vanity. So you have one two three four pocket doors and all of them You can just kind of like sit your head right up against the you know near the top and You can just feel this hot air coming out of the attic um, which is Apparently also means that we're you know pulling a vacuum on the upstairs in order to pull that air out, 
or it's pushing air into the attic from the, the HVAC. Another reason to have mini splits, I guess, instead of a, a central HVAC system. Um, but like, but that's four pocket doors doing that with like 140 degree air coming from the attic. So I really need to get that sealed up somehow because that would probably significantly help um, my kilowatt hours and my AC's ability to actually keep up upstairs. Because it's already kind of, um, around here they generally do like what, a ton per 500 square foot and it's a three ton unit cooling 1,700 square feet upstairs. So it gets a little help from the downstairs unit, but uh, it's a little it's a little undersized in the, the rough aspect. Who knows if there's a manual J ever done on it to see what it really should have been for tonnage. Would feeding wires count as an ASMR? I don't know. So, I know ASMR is pretty heavy on sound. Is there actually like visual ASMR as well? Like, is that a thing? I suppose there's sounds to stripping and feeding wire as well. So it's not just it's not just visual. Then all the zip ties. There we go. That would be you know managing it. Zip ties would be ASMR. I'm sure that's a classic ASMR. You're asking if the pocket doors are exposed to the attic. I don't know, like exposed. I don't know how much they're exposed. It could it could be that like there is a top plate on top of the pocket door. It's just that top plates don't really seal and wood works and maybe air just kind of, you know, gets in. So I don't know like at what level. Like I'm pretty sure I was up there and there were top plates. It's just... They don't seal really well, I guess. I don't know. I was watching a video the other night about sealing it from the inside, which just means disassembling the pocket door in order to stuff foam in all the places. So I just haven't decided whether I'm going to do that or I'm going to crawl into the attic and move all the insulation aside to see if I can seal it from that side. But my attic's probably 110 degrees even at you know, eight in the morning, so don't relish climbing up there if I don't have to. There's something else someone said. What's the BMS balancing current? On this BMS, I believe it's 100 milliamps, so it's just a little passive balancer, not much. And no, I I have never fused my sense leads. I have not. <laughs> I don't think I'm ready to let my son loose on assembling batteries. I have managed to not blow myself up yet, but there's a lot of potential, a lot of potential energy here.
I'm curious, you guys, if I've got a few people in here that have looked at prices on used panels. If you saw some 220 watt panels and they were being advertised for like 40 bucks a piece. And that's like 40 bucks if you're just buying a few of them, right? But maybe like 35 if it's by the pallet. Like would that be, would that be tempting? Would that be tempting enough that's like, sure, I'll buy a pallet of those. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to put them. <laughs> but I'll go ahead and get them because I don't want to miss out on that. What would be important to you in the listing to make that decision? Other than like, you know, pictures in a data sheet. Pictures in a data sheet are important. Kids learn quickly. It's true. They do. <laughs> Miswiring the BMS can cost more money than the build. Yes. I've never had miswiring of a BMS cost so far. There's actually someone that bought some equipment from me and ended up miswiring his BMS. Um, it was a JBD. And it was actually fine. He miswired. He said it got hot. And he wasn't sure why it got hot. He just disconnected it and brought it over so we could take a look. And uh, sure enough, it was miswired. And the, the sense leads were... But um, we wired it up correctly, and it, it fired up, and seems to be working fine, which is quite amazing. Maybe it was just balancing things, or thinking it was balancing things. Probably made these wires too long. Yeah, two 220 watt panels for less than 100 bucks. Okay, that's my main positive. This is the part where I probably should have had my positive and negative wires ready to go. You know what? I'm going to put, I'm just going to go ahead and put a nut on here just to keep these from flying off. And then I'm going to move on to my negative leads. Where did I throw? There it is. So this is that wire I said that I ordered 100 meters of this. 100 meters. Hopefully that'll last me a while. Because this stuff didn't last me very long. All right, so this guy needs to be that yay one. Where are my brand new Klein snips? Since you're building a battery, could you speak about sizing a battery for home use and what would need to consider for regular AC compressor use? Sizing a battery for home use. So, I think the, the traditional method of sizing a battery for full off-grid use is something like three times your daily consumption. So for us, we were looking at my daily consumption, and it could be up to 140 kilowatt hours a day, uh, which would make my battery, what, 450, 450 kilowatt hours? That'd be a lot. That'd be a lot. Um, what I always talk to people about, too, is like how much are you willing to run, say, a generator or pull from the grid um, if the battery is depleted? Because... That could be a lot less expensive than building your battery to handle three days of no sun. Um, and that, that, that just depends on what your, what your needs are. So my thought is, for my house, like I'd like to have a, a 100 kilowatt hour battery. I think that would get me through, as long as I had enough solar, enough being, for me, probably like 20, 24 kilowatts, that would be enough to get me through 95, 98% of the year with no grid usage at all, day and night. Um, and that's just the balance that I'd be willing to do. And honestly, I might consider disconnecting from the grid and using like my hybrid car as a generator 
for those days or those weeks where it's super cloudy. I can just go out there, make sure the gas tank is full, fire it up and charge at like two or 3,000 watts until the battery's full and go shut down. But uh, What would I consider for normal AC compressor use? Are you talking about like startup current for AC compressor? Because what Setite said with the soft start is definitely required, uh, recommended. Especially with high frequency inverters, they don't have the, the surge capacity that a low frequency inverter has. And most of what we have nowadays is, is high frequency. You can still get low frequency, like a Schneider. They can handle surge currents like no other. Um, something like a Solark, DI, a lot of the MPP Solar, GrowWatt, Mega Revo, a lot of that's high frequency. I think you get a lot more flexibility with high frequency stuff than you do with low frequency. It's probably less expensive to build too, which is why a lot of our stuff is high frequency. So, um, but you can cut your startup current by like three or four times by having a soft start. And these soft starts are not, they're not a capacitor. It's not a hard start capacitor. Like your AC already has that. A soft start is a, um, it's basically, the way I understand it, it's an inverter drive for just like three or four seconds, if even that. So it'll run, 10, eight. It'll run your compressor up slowly instead of starting all at once, is all it does. Um, so that helps a lot. <clears throat> As an example, my three ton standard compressor, AC compressor, would not run on my 8,000 watt inverter. My 8,000 watt hybrid mega revo inverter. Wouldn't start it. Or if it did, it was just barely. Um, with, a, with a soft start, it was like, eh, it could kind of sort of do it. With two inverters, it was fine. So I have 16,000 watts of inverter and a soft start, and I don't notice it in the house when it starts. So like right now, we have no grid power connected. I've got the breakers off. We're running completely off grid. And uh, I don't notice it when the upstairs AC kicks on and starts running, even with it pulling, what does it pull, about 2,500 watts running, which means it's quite a bit more than that starting. Um, but yeah, that works well. I don't know if that actually answered your question. You can always ask me a clarifying question. Okay, similar to the Santan sidewalk sale. Man, if I'm close to the Santan sidewalk sale, then I'm probably doing pretty good. They got some really cheap stuff. I assume those are like pallets where they don't have a large quantity of them. And they're like, well, we're just going to go ahead and get rid of these all at once. Um, okay, so that's going there. I'm going to reach around. Ooh, it's tight. This one needs to be a little bit longer. <clears throat> far side what's a regular compressor 30 50 70 amps a regular compressor like how many amps it pulls on startup a three ton compressor running not startup is someone do the math 2500 watts divided by 240 would be about it's running um, startup, I think it's like 70 amps or something is what it is, startup. Hello, little one. Oh, my... Yeah, my breakers are off literally just because I was I was wondering this morning how well the uh, how well the inverters would handle with the grid just flipping off, and then so I just flipped the breakers off. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm just gonna run off grid today. That's 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 the only reason. I don't get any money for anything that I send back. I'm on a uh, I'm not on a solar buyback plan, so anything I send back is just free energy for them, which I don't mind if it's excess. I'll give it away, but um, yeah, it's not benefiting me at all. I think I'm on the most beneficial plan that I can be on, which is free nights. So, 
doesn't matter to me. RV10 flyer, 31 kilowatt peak, 160 kilowatt hour, two 12K inverters, takes care of me in Kentucky, totally off grid. That's awesome. So you've got with 31 kilowatt peak, you can generate, you can certainly charge your battery in a day, but it would probably be, you probably couldn't most of the time charge a battery during the day. So you've got a pretty big battery bank compared to your um, capacity. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Do I have any four gauge connectors in here? I hope I do. These look like five sixteenths. I wanted a, I wanted a quarter inch hole. Oh, that's a quarter inch hole. Actually, I may as well crank the other two 8 gauge wires while I'm at it here. I wish I had my numbers for how long these need to be. Bye. Bye. Because I need to run from there up to there. So something like that. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I'm going to run a wire quick. So locked rotor amps. Yeah, because that's the, that's the surge current basically, right? LRA. So 70 to 100 amps for a three ton sounds about right. RV10 flyer. I think, I don't know for sure, I think it's more than just a cap inside though of those um, soft start units. I think it's actually like a, like an inverter drive. It's basically making your standard compressor into an inverter drive compressor for the first little bit because it's already got a cap and if a cap discharges quickly it's got to charge up quickly but I don't know I'm not an electronics expert I should go learn from somebody that is you might be and I should just be uh, agreeing with you instead of arguing with you I actually bought myself a, a fancy stripper for these. And here I am using my cutters instead. But the silicone wire is so easy to cut. Orbicron, you're asking how strong my BMS is. This is a this is a 100 amp BMS with probably like 100 milliamps of um, balance current so just a real simple one nothing nothing special there it is it does have all the canvas communications to mimic um pylon tech or grow watt or you know all those all those so it's compatible with a bunch of different inverters this is a uh, it's a jaco bms is what it is i'm not i'm not trying to hide what kind of bms it is They're pretty. They're pretty cost effective. They're not. They're not that expensive. I do wish they had active balancing. I don't know of any. Uh, I don't know of any board BMS like this that has the communications and made of a rack mount that has active balancing. I don't know of any of them. It stinks. Why does this come off? Oh, that's cool. I guess that's the hydraulic oil reservoir. I should probably be careful about taking that off. All right, where am I going here?
So RV10 Flyer can generate 130 kilowatt hours in the summer with its original 20 kilowatt peak. And now you're up to 31.5, dang. So I'm only up to, seems like you're doing better than I am. My best day yet this summer was just the other day. Where was, hold on, let me go, let me go bring that up. So, I generated, yeah, two days ago, 68.7 kilowatt hours in a single day. And that's with about 12,000 watts of panel. Um, unfortunately, some of it's not optimal angles. Oh, those are the ones you're talking about, Satit? How expensive are those? Are those the, uh, did you also say those were the grade B ones? And also watch out for that JK BMS. It might say that it has CAN bus and not actually. I had a big argument with my supplier because she was supposed to send me CAN bus enabled JK and then ended up telling me that in order to get CAN bus enabled, I had to order uh, do a minimum order quantity and they'd have to custom make it. So it might just be that it's labeled as having CAN bus, but it doesn't actually, I don't know. Or maybe the supplier you bought it from did have it custom made with canvas. I should give them the benefit of the doubt. All right, now I'm gonna do my janky thing and bend these. I should have fixed this in this version, this next version that's coming. But the only way to get these on is if they're sitting at a 90 degree angle, like that. And then have these screws. Oh, I should probably crimp the other end first, huh? This needs a four gauge. Got my four gauge die here. There they are. Grade B, 305 for 90 bucks a cell plus shipping. Yeah. Hopefully it's got canvas in reality. Hopefully it does. Yeah, I'm, 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 I've, I think I mentioned earlier, I bought, um, I bought some 304 amp hour eaves. So they'll be here in like a month or two. Um, but like, I think I'd have to sell them for 150 a piece to make anything. Y'all don't let me forget to put heat shrink on these before I install it all. So Ty, you were asking me about what gauge of uh, what gauge of ring terminal would fit those JK BMS wires, and I don't remember if it was the four gauge or the two gauge. I think that that seven gauge wire, the double seven gauge, fit inside of a four gauge crimp, like what I'm doing here. I'm pretty sure it was a four gauge. This eight gauge fits really easy. So I'm bet you a, seven, a double seven gauge would fit inside a four gauge terminal, four gauge lug. This isn't crimping the same way. 
way that it usually does. Granted, it's a different crimper. Maybe the die is a little bit different. $100 each. That's cheap. And like I said, like I was saying, I'm not... I'm not against grade B cells. As long as electrically they actually perform, I suppose. Because that is really cheap. Hope I'm not doing anything wrong here. Alright, and this guy needs the same treatment. Where, where did my lugs? Didn't I have a whole bag of those here? Where did they go? Did this, oh, there they are. I need to get this thing finished up. Been alive for a while now. I suppose I'm not too far off. There we go. Okay, so I need some heat shrink. Where's my heat shrink at? Is this the stuff? That looks like the stuff. Let's cut off a couple pieces of this. Ooh, that didn't cut very well. I have my scissors right here, Christopher. Why don't you just use those instead of making nasty cuts? Probably should have bought a bunch of heat shrink last time I ordered stuff. Oh, well. Is this the stuff I'm using? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, please fit. Order of operations is important. I could have put this from the other side before I crimped the four gauge terminal on there. Bummer. Whale? I wonder if this stuff would work. This is going to be really large. Let me try it.
Yeah, it looks like that'll work. This is toasty. I mean, that is the point. The point is to be toasty. I oh, want okay. this one. Thanks, RV10. Yeah, we'll get those panels installed. All right, now I got some wire. This is taking me way too long. I should really probably have these custom made in China and just shipped to me. But here we are. And you can't even see what I'm doing now. Far side, you thinking about like picking up some cells from me or a battery from me? Or from a 18650 store or what? you want, I'll sign this battery for you. You can have this one here. <laughs> Sorry, that's just my big head talking. Nobody wants a signature from me. <laughs> um, this guy is $1,800. So that's 130 amp hour, um, 100 amp BMS, all assembled, five year warranty, ready to go. All right, I got that one on. There's a bag of these screws in here somewhere. Because I know I tossed them over here, knowing that I didn't need them now, but I needed them later. Here, screw, 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 screw. There they are. Hey, Skulta, I can help you with that. Do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about your needs here, or do you want to do that offline? can do it either way. Either way. Look at that. I can finally connect my B minus. You. Yeah. 
So RV10 Flyer uses two gauge butt splice from Amazon, two seven gauge into a two gauge extension on the 304 amp hour E cells with two bolt holes. I just installed, I just installed two each at six gauge lugs. Six gauge lugs. Oh, for the seven gauge wire, right. Yeah, that makes sense. And then you can go from, because you're kind of stuck with the, you're stuck with the double seven gauge from the BMS. Like you can't change that. So you may as well jump up to two or something because they're, um, I'm assuming you're using a 200 amp BMS. So a two gauge, yeah, two gauge makes sense. Um, I like that. I like that. I always try to make it like, I like to make it to where I don't have to run the BMSs straight from the, or the wires right off the BMSs for very long before I hit something. So what I normally do is run like a, like a three eight stud basically. So I run the BMS to the stud and then I can run my two gauge, four gauge, whatever it is to that stud off to my bus bar or the inverter or what have you. But a bus splice works too. Especially if you're doing a stationary system and you just need to get back to the main bus bar. Sage, this one's actually a 130 amp hour. The BMS is 100 amps, so you can pull you know 4.8 kilowatts out of it at a time, but it's 130 amp hours of storage capacity at 48 volts. Yes, yeah, Skulta, give me a, give me a ring. I mean, honestly, shipping 64 cells and it costing 500 bucks for shipping, that's that's not bad. All right, take care, RV10. Have a good one. All right, so that's in there good. This is good. I need to get a positive wire, which is, I was using four gauge for this. I think I'm gonna hack this one up. Oh, maybe this is, is this long enough? Is this long enough? No. That's not long enough. Let's snip this. I should really have a scrap copper bin around here somewhere. Whew. Okay, and then we're gonna put, oh, look at that, we're already at four gauge. Where is my four gauge quarter inch here? so weird. This one does not seem to work as well as the older one that I've got. It makes these offset crimps. Maybe it's user error though. I'll have to try better next time. All right, so if that goes there, I'm gonna need my lid again to see where the other side goes. Cause that's gonna go into the breaker. I'm gonna go to the top of the breaker. So from there, to the top of the breaker should be right about there. Anyway, anyway, 
Did you hear how in my head I was like thinking about something and then I just speak out loud as if you guys were right there with me? <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway. I was thinking about the panels I have in stock at the warehouse. Because right now I've got 240 watt solar worlds, I've got 245 watt ETs, and I have the 490 watt Helene solar panels. I'm planning to also get some 365 watt Helenes, so they're going to be the same situation, grade B, straight from the factory. Um, and then... Break that. Guess that was holding it on the table. Um, and then I'm also gonna get, probably next week, a load of 220 watt panels. And I hesitated to get them because the last time I bought lower wattage panels, I bought a bunch of 185 watt panels. It just took me a while to sell them. Honestly, I'm still getting rid of the last few of them. I think I've had them for six or nine months. And they were just, they were just so weird in size and voltage and everything that I think just people were like, eh, I'd rather go with the standard like 250 or something. And 220 is closer to being like a 250 because that's like a really common size for like a 60 cell panel. So I did go ahead and order some uh, 220 watt panels and I got them cheap enough that they're going to be really cheap, like probably 40 bucks a piece and then if you want to get a pallet of them, I'll get I'll go even less than that. Um, so if anybody's looking for some some very cheap, very cheap panels, you know, let me know. I can maybe get you get you hooked up with some um, some two twenties. I don't even remember what brand they are. They're not like a Trina or a Solar World or something. They're just some just some standard polycrystalline panels. looking for oh zip tie that's how I got them under I like to put the uh, I like these bus bars as opposed to the solid ones I was talking about that earlier I don't like the solid ones as much they don't have any give to them these ones too have the heat shrink on top of them and I like to just stick the temperature sensor up under the heat shrink and then I just zip tie it so that it can't come back out and that gives me these bus bars are overrated for being a, a 100 amp BMS so if there's a problem with the connection, then it'll see it, but realistically, it's going to measure more or less the internal temperature of the battery being at the bus bar. Yeah, that's the idea, Skulta. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go through and individually test every single 220 watt panel. However, I'll warranty them because I do that with all my, unless they're like a, a real as is panel, like I do that with all my used panels. I'll give you a one-year warranty so yeah if that works for you we can get you we can get you set up with some 220s and see what else you need all right so if i'm going to do that as my first one two three four five let's do a temperature probe here on that cell five where did my zip time go do 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 y'all know what you're having for dinner tonight? I'm not sure what I'm having for dinner tonight. I should go see if I need to cook something for dinner. There we go. All right, so that's number five. So then if we go, so that's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So let's go into here. Grab a zip tie. You guys probably can't see what's going on because my arm's in the way. I'm sitting here, I'm thinking in my brain again. So I was thinking about having people come by the warehouse and uh, 
think I told somebody I was going to be there Friday. And then I committed to go travel somewhere north on Friday. So I need to go back and text him and make sure that he doesn't come by Friday morning. Alright, and then we're going to do this one on the last cell. So I'll probably be at the warehouse Friday afternoon, just not Friday morning. There you go. Check, do a site survey at a place. I told him that I'm not interested in installing panels for his grid tie system, but maybe I can give some advice, whether it be good advice or not. Okay, so now I've got everything up in there. Now I just need to wire manage these things. I don't know why I didn't do this earlier. I got distracted with my other wiring for some reason. But whatever. It's fine. Steven, you're asking if mono is better than poly. I have not seen any evidence from testing solar panels to show one way or the other, myself. I know there's supposed to be differences, and I think that monos are slightly higher in watt per square meter, because all, all the new panels are basically mono. But when you're talking about a used panel and it's a 250 watt panel, 250 watt mono, 250 watt poly, I, I really don't know that it makes a difference. I really don't. This is a, why is this such a mess? Why, Christopher? This is your fault. Which one do I wire manage first? Maybe if I just work along a little further here. Just went OCD on that one. Okay. Now we're asking something else. Set tight, you're asking, I have a tester. Is it really easier to warranty without checking them? Yes, I've got a tester. But you also have to consider, like if I commit to testing every single one, I have to touch 800 solar panels. 800 solar panels before I can even sell them. I mean, I could sell as I test. But like, I don't want to be outside testing 800 solar panels. So there's definitely a part of me that's just like, I'll just sell them. They're just good use solar panels. And yeah, there, there's going to be one here and there that aren't good and they'll find them and bring them back and I'll replace it. It's not ideal because I'd rather only sell panels that are perfect. That's, that's more ideal. Um, and I was definitely going down that route of like, I wanna test every single solar panel and be the person that sells used panels that have all been cleaned and tested. And maybe when I have more, maybe when I have an employee, I could do that. But I'm thinking right now, more along the lines of, if you want to buy a used panel, that's great. I'll provide a one-year warranty. So if you have a problem with it, need to bring it back, absolutely. Like, no questions asked. You can bring it back. But the time it would take for me to sit there and test old used solar panels, it's just, I just don't know that it's worth it. So that's where I'm at. Especially if I've got the option of new solar panels, which I do now. I didn't have that before. Like, that, that gives the customer an option. You can buy a brand new panel here that's straight from the factory. Um, and yes, you're going to pay more of a premium for it, but you get a tax credit for it if, if you're able to qualify for that. And more assurances that it's going to actually operate the way that the label says because it hasn't been out in the field for 10, 15 years. So that's my thoughts on it.
Orbicron, you're a fan of used shadow resistant glass top panels. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, honestly, I don't know of any panels that were made with non-tempered glass up until they started doing the bifacials. I did a monologue on that earlier. Um, Cause I think, I think most are, if not all have been um, tempered glass, which is great. Cause I mean like what can go wrong with that, right? <laughs> what could go wrong? Um, and I don't think, yeah, I don't think it's any more or less durable that it's used or new. I think it's just a matter of, so, you know, so, so some solar panels will degrade faster than others. So you're going to have, like, if I buy this, these 800 panels and I don't test any of them, I will inevitably be refunding some people for some panels and I'm okay with that. And I don't, you can ask anybody that's gotten a refund from me. I don't quabble about it. Like, I shipped out 28 of these 490 watt panels and um, he sent me a picture. The very top one got like this scratch in the back and he said it didn't look like anything had been dropped on it. But like I looked at it and it was gouged in the back. He's like, I mean, it might still work. I'm like, no, that's I just sent him a check for 200 bucks. Like I'm not going to I'm not going to mess around with that. I would rather him just have the 200 bucks and not worry about is this panel going to break in a year? You know, and then my warranty's up and then blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, just sure. Do you want to keep the panel and use it? But at that point it was a free panel for him. So he doesn't have to worry about it being a possible dud panel in the future. And it's even easier on used panels, right? If I'm selling a panel for 40 bucks, obviously I paid less than that for that. So if somebody says after shipping them 25 panels that two of them aren't working right, I'm just gonna refund the money. Yeah, Santan recommending buying more than you need. And that'll definitely be in my description, especially if I haven't tested every single panel before I ship it. Um, but really that's, that's something I should be more uh, more forceful about because even if they have been tested, the, there's things get damaged in transit, they just do. And for the most part, people have realized that that's the case with solar panels and they accept that you know, if they order 28 panels, they, they, they may get 26 that are good. And somebody's not going to ship just two panels to them. Um, because you, you just can't. The, the freight company will just obliterate that pallet of two panels. Um, they, they, they do better when they're heavier. Probably because they get stuff set on them and stuff. But, yeah. I am really close. I was probably another 20 minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Go eat your dinner far side. I need to go eat mine too. Hey Sebastian. Oh, that's weird that comments aren't getting through. I, I, I have no way to troubleshoot that, but Ideas for racking the server batteries. <laughs> I suppose other than like an actual server rack. No, um, I've considered I've considered looking at some sort of a kit where you can basically just set them on top of each other, which I think some of them do. I don't know if it's SOK that does that, where they have server rack-ish batteries, but you kind of like, you have a kit that can stack one on top of another on top of another. So you can have like four in the stack. So I've considered looking at, you know, what it would take to fabricate some pieces to be able to do that. But, um, I mean, a standard 19 inch rack mount with, um, supports underneath that you can slide them in, like that would work. And they should be pretty cheap on the used market. Cause those are the kinds of, those, those 19 inch rack mount cases are the kinds of things that basically get thrown away as time goes on and IT rooms are upgraded. Some people like want meant for them, but they're not worth anything used. 
So shouldn't be a problem getting a hold of them. But that's the big deal is getting them used because <laughs> buying stuff like that new is so expensive. So it's, okay, that doesn't that's not so bad. I was I was expecting worse than that when I got started. All right, so I do need to go ahead and finish this up, but I believe I've got all the wiring. I need to get my positive cable on here, and then I need to get um, uh, what is it that I need to get? There was something else. Hold on. Oh, I need to get torque down. I don't have a torque down yet. And then I'm not gonna move this over and connect it to the um, balancer with you guys on the stream, but that'll be my next step later this evening. Use some of my use some of my battery power stored in the other room to charge this guy up. Alright, so that guy's in and he needs to come around. Oof. I don't really like this. I'd like to have some silicone wire for this. Okay. We need to come around to there. These Klein cutters do not work as well as the off-brand ones that I've got at the warehouse, which is weird. Maybe they're just a little tight. try and crimp this without messing it up. My dies seem to get like offset and don't crimp straight. Just make it look ugly. I'm sure that mechanically it's fine. It just doesn't look right. Yeah, it just like starts going off to the side. I'm gonna have to email Tim Co on this and see what they say. Or maybe go look up a video on how to use a Tim Co crimper. Maybe that's all I need. I'm not trained in it. Yeah, maybe the Klein tool just needs some break in. But it certainly seems harder to actually cut through something. A precharge circuit. Um, I'm pretty sure it does. I should know the answer about it has a precharge circuit. But it doesn't have the big old. Yeah, yeah, I see the coils up here. The coil's not nearly as big as what you have on like an EZ4, so it could be it won't pre-charge like a big old transformer based inverter as well. I've never had an issue with any of the ones I've tried it on, but. Okay, I got that. So now I need to mount this guy in place. I should have a little bracket over here. Here we go. And a couple of screws stick on there. And you can't see what I'm doing because I'm out of frame. I'm barely in frame as it is. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. I hope I got this breaker up right. Let's see, that's a little loose. Hold on. I don't like the tightness of the wire. What happened to you? Yeah, that's all right. It's a lot of work to put together one battery pack. I'll tell you what. I should just sell them as kits. Oh wait, y'all already asked me to. I was sitting here wondering, like, where does this thing go? Where does it go? It goes right here. Okay. 
this guy needs to come loose. Come over here. Connect him up. Do I ever use ferals? That was going through my mind. I really probably should. I've got a feral kit, but it's for much smaller stuff. I need to buy a feral kit for larger gauge wire. Because um, I know some of the big guys like Victron require that you use ferals for that type of thing. And it's probably fair. Probably feral. Um, now I'm grabbing all my random wires that connect to my various BMS parts together. Oh, I forgot about this one. Hmm. Heat gun's still putting off a bit. How many of you have burnt yourself on your heat gun? I hate it when I do that. Okay. So, this guy. Terminal. This is the positive wire for the BMS that powers it up. So it needs to be able to run over here to the positive terminal, which I'll connect in just a minute. And then, okay, so we got like this one, which runs um, to all the, runs to the breakout board on the front. For all of your Cat5 connections. Do, 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 do. CAN bus, RS-485, all that jazz. Okay, I got that in, and then this guy, your IDE cable of old, is for all like the LEDs on the front, it looks like. And that runs down to there. None of these cables are the same, which is kind of weird that they would just do so many different types of cable. Like, why not just use them all the same? But on the other hand, it's kind of nice because you can't get it wrong because one thing only plugs into one other thing. So, not going to knock it. And then the screen itself plugs in here. And then I should be able to put my front plate on. And I actually released this thing from its cave. Last time I didn't, I had to fish it out. It was really obnoxious. They have it like wrapped around the heat sink from the factory, which is good for holding it in place, but annoying when you need to get to it after you've installed it and you can't get in there. All right, I'm gonna have to redo this screw when I actually put the, maybe I could put the ears on now. Where are the ears? So you actually put this screw through the ear. Could leave the ears off in case I have to ship it, but I've just been putting them on. So I'll probably just be selling these locally, realistically. Front's on for the most part. Another one of those screws. See you so tight. Have fun at the concert. All right, now I need to run my positive cable over. Do, 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 do. No sparks, that's always good. But you didn't see me smiling there. Eyes playing. And I'm gonna go to like 50 inch pounds on this. 
we used to limit it to like 30 or 40 back when um, <laughs> back when they would just drill and tap into the top of the batteries and top of the cells and you really couldn't tighten them much but with these laser welded ones like this it's not such a big deal you can tighten them pretty good just gotta make sure you get all of them so I always just follow follow the electrons through so I know I get every single connection Hi. <laughs> Did you almost trip? <laughs> you see me? up the BMS. Oh, I should have had the camera pointed at it. Hold on. Yeah. Sorry for the vertigo there, guys. Here we go. Look at that. I'm going to try flipping the camera upside down. There we go. Oh, of course, it's all backwards. Hold on. <laughs> Oh, I think I can fix that. Now it's forwards. So, we should be able to peel this off. That's a little better. This one got dinged a little bit there. This might just be a, uh, this might be a battery for me to keep. Okay, analog info. Got 52 volts. 3.2 a piece, pretty, oh, those last ones are a little, oh, there was one set in there that was a little higher, 329 instead of 325. So it could be this new, uh, this new batch I got where it was a slightly different state of charge. But we should have uh, temperature readings, yep, 25 Celsius, pretty nominal. No, uh, no warnings in here, so it looks good. Um, yes, I'll go back and cut all my zip ties and get this done. But I need to go help make dinner and get some other stuff done. But that is me putting together a battery, so thanks for hanging out. I appreciate all the conversation as I go to see if anybody said anything before I uh, leave. Ferrules are required for standard wire and screw terminals, not in clamp terminal like Wago. That makes sense. Yeah, I really need to go get, um, that's on my to-do list now. I need to go put on my written to-do list to get some ferrules that'll fit like four gauge wire and stuff. Um, oh yeah, and the vibration's even worse, huh? Yep, yep. At least these, at least this breaker wasn't like a screw terminal where it was just a screw going down on the strands. It was actually like a, a flat piece with like serrations in it holding onto the wires. But I still think a terminal 
I still think a um, feral feral would be appropriate. So I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a great evening. I'll see you again soon. Thanks, Toasties. <laughs>